Mass here from Kick and Mate. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Modestus Bukowskis ahead of his fight with Khalil Roundtree on September 4th. How's it going, Modestus? Very, very good, thank you. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks. And uh, again, thanks for making some time for me. Um, ahead of a big fight, I know we've got a little while to go yet. So we're, we're, it's September 4th, as I said. Are you fully in camp now? What, what stage of the process are you in right now? Mate, I've been, I've been, I've been training. I've been training pretty much the whole time, as as per usual. In terms of like the actual, you know, the other certain stresses of a camp, or you, you probably, I guess, you could say, start about eight weeks out. But I mean, I'm always trying to improve my game. I'm always trying to improve my skill set, work on stuff uh, that I need to improve on from my last fight and stuff like that, which I've already made adjustments. So I've already. I needed to make the appropriate adjustments before even starting camp to then really like knuckle down. But I've been knuckling down and focusing for a while now. So, uh, yeah, it just, you know, like I say, uh, the longer it goes, the better I feel, really. Yeah, so take it over, um, you know, picking up some new skills, but the actual hard work kicks off at eight weeks out. So what you said, you mentioned some changes you're making there. What are the specific changes you're looking to make? Well, so... Uh, one one thing um, that that I've done is um, I've um, enlisted the help of uh, other guys that are my size um, in the UK and, and some some other prominent names. So uh, you know I, I just moved to, to to train at Team Titan, and um, uh, reason being, well, mainly obviously because you know schedule changes and stuff like that, and uh, yeah, just uh, you know I've, at certain points in your career you need to do certain things that you feel are going to help you to uh, level up or to be able to bring the best out of yourself or to, you know, to be able to highlight areas of your game that, that need particular areas that need improving and stuff like that. And uh, uh, so, yeah, um, I decided to, to go and, and, and train there um, uh, more regularly. And uh, it's def I've definitely noticed a hell of a lot of improvements in my game already that have, have helped me to level up even more so than I was before and helped me to bring my overall skill set together even better. And obviously that's completely no disrespect to BST. They're an amazing camp. They've got amazing coaches. I've learned a hell of a lot from them. Um, they, they, you know, helped me to win a world title at Cage Warriors and stuff like that. And um, yeah, just at this point in my career, I felt that was one move that was needed to be made. And um, I'm already starting to see the benefits and, um, yeah, it's, it's it's making me very excited for the fight. Uh, they've got some amazing athletes down there. You know, guys that are you know young, hungry. My my age, for the most part, even younger. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a great group of guys. Um, they all work hard, and uh, yeah, we all we all seem to be striving for the same thing and, and working together. So it, it's it's a great atmosphere. So that was one of the, I guess you could say, like sort of the main changes uh, that happened. And from that, that's just help me to bring out certain areas of my skill set which needed to be sort of addressed um, after the after the last couple of fights and I've said this before it's not necessarily a, a discrepancy of skill set it's just more like the sort of in between things the strategy the how to stop certain things or how you're going to fight and this and that and I've, I've definitely uh, worked to address those for sure yeah, that's a that's a big move, Darren. Um, you said it was to you know train with guys your size. So exactly, who are the guys you've been you know getting rounds in with and, and doing a lot of yeah. training with at the minute? So um, you know, like Luke Trainer uh, fights in Bellator, uh, really really good athlete. You know, Stuart Austin, another you know veteran of the UK game, who's 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 also very game now. He's he's an amazing athlete. Uh, Simin Powell. Another up and coming guy, which I'm I'm surprised he's not getting signed to fight anywhere. But obviously, I can see why he's an absolute animal. Um, you know, uh, we've got Bertie Oaks. Uh, you know, we've got another guy called Mario. I'm not sure about his last name, but I mean, if you look at it, it's not often that I step into a room and I'm the smallest guy. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm usually either the biggest guy, or the tallest guy. Whether all these guys are, are either taller or bigger than I am, and yeah, also Jason Radcliffe trains there as well. You know, Pelo Adetola. I mean, mate, we've got just a whole group of uh, amazing guys that all, like I say, they have the same mindset. We work hard when we need to. Uh, we joke around afterwards, and uh, it's a great family vibe. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it's definitely. Uh, even just having like, you know, just different sparring partners and different looks and giving me different, presenting different challenges that, you know, then, you know, sort of forced me to, to grow, which is good. Absolutely. And we'll just 
go back to UFC 260 and, and besides the fight itself, it was a great opportunity for you. For you. And you were, well, last time we spoke, you were very excited to go over to Vegas and compete in, you know, the fight capital of the world. I just want to get your take on what are the experience as a whole, the being in the pay-per-view and in Vegas. Yeah, so, I mean, once again, the UFC never falls short to uh, uh, take care of the athletes. Uh, you know, I was able to get physio whenever I wanted, all my meals were sorted. I mean, it's not often you get picked around in a limousine with your name on it, with your own driver to take you to the Apex and, and the PI and stuff like that. And uh, one thing was that those facilities are absolutely incredible. I mean, if you, you know, you see it on TV, but then to actually see it in real life and actually be there and be in that whole environment is what well, wasn't it? I can't exactly say I was starstruck, but you know, it was like, oh my lord, like here we are. I'm at the PI or I'm at the apex. Like this, this stuff is like, you know, it's like it's real, it's standing here right before my eyes. So that that was an amazing experience. Um so yeah, I mean obviously Vegas, we were only allowed to really stay in our hotel room and you know, you take like the uh, the the um, buses, the shuttles to to the grocery store, back and like to the to the PI and back and stuff like that. Um, as for the fight itself, um, I mean, obviously, uh, I definitely felt that I won that fight. Um, especially when I looked at the scorecards and you realised two of the judges gave him the first round. I don't know who in their right mind would give him the first round when I rocked him and landed the most significant strike differential. But listen, uh, at the end of the day, uh, he beat me. You know, he, he's also an incredible, he's a very tough fighter. People don't know that, you know, it's almost like people were sort of expecting me to go in there and then, you, you know, like really do a like, you know, I did my damage, but he's a very tough fighter. You know, he's fought some great guys. He's beaten a lot of great guys. So, you know, you've got to give him credit, uh, credit where it's due and, you know, fair play to him. Uh, he, he won the fight, but, uh, Obviously, I definitely felt that I did enough uh, to be able to to win that fight. Um, unfortunately, the the judges didn't see. It. I mean, when when Joe Rogan and Daniel Cormier and and I think John Anik was also in the comments when they all think that. I mean, I, I swear, one of the quotes from John Anik he said, "Oh yeah, Modesto, I think he's passed his test with flying colours." So when when the commentator says that and you end up losing the fight, I mean. Do you know what I mean? I, I think for, for, for the most part, uh, it looked like it was going in, in, in my direction. But as I say, uh, I'm actually glad that this happened because then it wouldn't have forced me to make, you know, like I say, certain changes. I think had I'd won that fight, I wouldn't have made the changes that I made. Um, so I'm actually very uh, thankful for that. And it was, it was a great fight, you know, uh, for the most part. I think people thought it was quite entertaining. Uh, I think they thought, you know, it's, it's full of action. So... If I'm able to to entertain the crowd as well, obviously the win would have been nice. But the fact that when people were talking about me and about the fight itself, and you know there was more good comments than bad comments, you know it was a good sign for me. So although it was a loss, uh, I learned a hell of a lot from it. I had an amazing experience, and it just made me more hungry to to, to get even better. Obviously, it puts a bit of a pressure on my shoulders for leading into my next fight. But um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm thankful for the experience. Yeah, besides the result, it was a great fight. I was, and at the time, I was surprised that you didn't come out with at least a bonus or something to take home for your for your troubles. So, uh, very very unlucky on all counts there. And I am also surprised to hear that you've made you know such big changes after a fight that you think you won, and a lot of people think you won. So, it, it was a great fight nonetheless. And um, you know, technically and and thing, things on that side of stuff, do you, do you pick out any type of mistakes, or do you just think? You know, you, you fought a really good fight. Yeah, I, I I definitely saw the areas that I'd that I'd been working spe specifically on that were working. Like you know, in terms of the boxing and stuff like that, especially when I was in the pocket with him, I was able I was able to land my strikes and land hard on him. Um, you know, my, my kicks were working well and and stuff like that. Uh, it was just areas of you know. I can shoot in on takedowns in, in training and, and with, with my training partners and stuff like that, but it, it wasn't made quite as easy in, in, in that fight, but I should have just shot more, you know, like that's, that's one, one sort of thing. If, 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 if I really wanted to get down to the floor, you know, I just needed to go ahead and press for it. Um, so I, I was happy with, with the way I was, I was putting some of my strikes together, but it was just too much on the back foot, which obviously was in the judge's eyes uh, seen as a negative, um, which is again, something that I've, that I've done for most of my career. So I'm glad that happened because now I've had to make sure that, uh, you know, I don't do that so much. So uh, that's, that's one massive positive um, from that fight. And 
yeah, just just being able to set things up in the correct, like the way that's best for me to be able to get in on certain things, like to get in on certain takes. Because like, I, I, I keep on saying, I've, I've mentioned it so many times now that, you know, I do have an overall skill set, but people have not really seen it. And I really am keen keen to show it. And I think it's just a case of how to unlock those those things it's like it's like someone who's like really stiff and they can't get anything off it's like it's almost like that it's like i was i was stiff in those certain areas and i wasn't able to get it off in the fight why i didn't know the 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 most appropriate way of doing so which now i'm starting to figure out and uh it's looking very promising obviously uh for for my next fight great and the next fight is Kali Ranchi, september 4th and it's it's you know a fairly big name what do you make of him as an opponent uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a very tough competitor. He's got very heavy hands. Uh, he's very aggressive. Um, you know, uh, we haven't seen much of his uh, much of his grappling. Um, you know, when it has entered the floor, obviously it seems that that's that's his uh, um, least. You know, the the area of which he's he's least skilled. But you know, as I say, guys can improve on all these things. Like even Oleg Shaychuk. Uh, worked a hell of a lot on his grappling within that time that he was off so you know like I say you, you never know I think I've I have to admit I remember I remember actually watching Khalil on the Ultimate Fighter back when I was I think maybe five and two or some or six and two or maybe when I just came back off the injury and I was like you know getting really motivated seeing guys like that uh, in the UFC and it's almost like a um it's almost like a bit like you know, idols become rivals sort of sort of deal. So that's the sort of situation that I feel right now. It's like you know, a guy that I sort of looked up to. You know, I've heard him on the Joe Rogan podcast. The next thing you know, I'm fighting him. It's a, it's a hell of a great opportunity. Uh, yeah, he's very tough. Um, you know, he is durable. He um, he can take a punch. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of I need to I need to show an overall mixed uh, MMA game. Uh, in order to beat him. And I definitely feel confident that I'm going to be able to do so. Is this a fight you see going, you know, into the later rounds? Because he's he's um, he's been impressive at times, but he's also been pretty inconsistent in terms of sometimes he just goes in and, and he, he's lost a couple of times in first round knockout. So how, how do you see the fight playing out? Well, listen, I always go for the finish. I mean, if you saw in my last fight, although I couldn't get it, uh, in the first and second round, I was very close to finishing him. So I'm always going to be going for that. I'm always going to be going, going to be vying for that. But uh, in this particular, and and this is where I feel I feel I'll finish Khalil Roundtree again. I, I say it every single time, and uh, I truly, true, truly believe in myself and and what I can do. And I'm just going to wear him down, do my thing, you know, set set up everything the way I want to, and then and then land land the 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 strikes then to finish him uh he's like i say he's very tough and i respect them to 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 the highest degree but i've got to go in there do my thing i've got to go out there and beat him this is a very important fight for me i've got to go out there and it's you know it's kill or be killed for me so uh uh i'm excited to to have that mentality going into this fight and uh i'm also excited to to show my overall skill set which i haven't been able to do so in the past so uh, every time I, I feel like I'm leveling up and uh, you can be rest assured uh, this would be the best version of the Baltic Gladiator anyone has ever seen. Good to hear. And you, are you still going with the um, the goals board and have you got specific pre- predictions on there? I remember last time you, show, you showed me it was a second round one. It didn't quite go your way. You still yeah. Going? Uh, yeah, 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 100%. Uh, I've changed it slightly a little bit just putting like my roadmap of how I want, you know, my 2021 to go and, and stuff like that. And just, you know, just certain other, other, other goals that I have, you know, leading up to the future uh, and stuff like that. So uh, I just change it sort of on the fly. We're on, on, on something. Um, but uh, I do feel that, that God has, has led me a path. He's, he's had to give me these lessons in order to, uh, to, to progress not only in my career to, to you know my goal is to become world champion it's not just to go in there oh compete oh yeah this that no nah, it's to be UFC world champion so if I have to learn these lessons earlier on in my career then so be it um, at least it will lead me on to, to the later half of my career to go and uh, and really smash it and take over so you know as you as you know you can very quickly become a superstar in the UFC and you can very quickly not become a superstar so listen I'll rather I'd rather at the beginning uh, take, take, take my losses and, you know, 
take take the times where where it's been a bit tough to then to move on. I definitely feel after a bit of a downward tra- trajectory, it's going upwards now. Um, I'm definitely feeling it, and uh, yeah, it's exciting stuff, man. Good to hear. And the, the good thing about this, well, hopefully, the good thing about this September fourth card is that it is targeted for London. What's the what's the noise you're hearing from the UFC? Is that where your plans are fight? Yeah, so that's the plan. Obviously, I mean, whether it will happen, we don't know. But I mean, it's all basically based off of you know us living in the UK. Uh, we're going to hear a lot of stuff about COVID and 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 all that kind of stuff. So really, it's quite um, it's determined by whether or not you know they're going to open everything up. But it seems like now, especially in the news, that it is going in that direction. I mean, they just had twenty thousand people, I think, for the Euros. So if you think about it that way, you know, 20,000 people in a stadium, obviously they had to have their space, that, but still there's, a, you know, there's only 20,000 people, for example, at the O2. So um, I think it's definitely leaning towards the direction. By the, I, I'm hoping by mid-July, everything should be back open as normal. Everyone's sort of, you know, we're making herd immunity because most people would have been vaccinated. And then, uh, and then, yeah, everything, you know, the show, the show will go on. And I mean, with guys like you know Darren Till head headlining uh, for London, it, it, it will definitely make a splash. You know the the uh, the UFC always likes to make one massive event in London when whenever they can. So uh, I think this is the one that they're targeting. So fingers crossed. Hopefully everything will go to plan, and uh, and then yeah, I'll be able to make a walk in my hometown. Yeah, and, and the always one from last year as well. We are the first one to get scrapped, so hopefully that comes off. It's just a question of if London will be fully open. I know Dana White's very particular about he wants full crowds. He doesn't want the spacing and things like that. Have they kind of said, OK, the target's London, but be ready to travel to you know Vegas or, or Abu Dhabi or if they just kind of said, we'll, we'll tell you at a later date? Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. At the minute, all I can do is assume. Uh, even on the contract, it still says, you know, TBA. So, uh, you know, my manager can say one thing. Um, and obviously, I, I, I completely trust him and, 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 and know that, you know, that's where, that's where they're hoping to head. But, you know, I'm just, I'm preparing for a fight at the end of the day. So, you know, whether it's in Vegas, whether it's here, obviously, obviously, I mean, what could be better than walking out in front of your hometown uh, for a UFC event and and in front of a live crowd, I've not fought in front of a live crowd uh, for the UFC yet. So to be able to do that would be freaking amazing. So I'm really I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. But judging by the news, it looks like it's going that direction. So uh, let, let's hope it car- uh, continues to go that way. Absolutely, fingers crossed on that. And I just want to get your your opinion on something that's you know a hot topic at the minute, and you kind of fall into this category as a as a relatively new UFC fighter. I don't know if you've seen the news as uh, UFC flyweight Sarah Alpa has kind of set up a GoFundMe to fund her fight career at this point. And I just want to get your opinion on the the UFC pay structure, how you're coping with being you know a, a relatively newcomer to the UFC being a full-time athlete and, and making it financially viable? Yeah, well, I went back to being a full-time... I, I do think sponsorship is a big deal. Now, in England, it's a hell of a lot harder to get sponsorship. You go in America, a lot of those athletes do get sponsored by big brands uh, already leading into the UFC. Um, for, for British people, it's a, it's, it's a lot harder. I mean, personally if the contract's good enough for you to be able to train full time, but you just got to have confidence in yourself that, you know, you're going to, everything's going to work out and you're going to go and win. And you're going to, you know, obviously getting half the money is, you know, obviously it's a substantial amount less. Um, The other thing that, that, you know, obviously plays into account more so in America is the tax because they have, a state tax and a federal tax and all this other nonsense. So for, for them, obviously a lot, and then they're having to pay trainers and, and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously, yeah, I, I think it's enough to go obviously fight to fight, but you just got to make sure that you obviously, you know, I think four fights a year, you'll be able to, especially off the first contract, you'll be able to scratch it. But then that's what, that's what everyone's aiming for. They're aiming for the second contract to be able to, um, you know, be be able to get a bump in pay, which will then be able to help them train even more. But look, 
for the whole time I was in Cage Warriors and even leading, I mean, I took a bit of a risk really four weeks before the world title fight, you know, quit my job. But, um, you know, there's there's times where you've got to have belief in yourself. You might have a little bit of money saved and just freaking go for it and then things will happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, I still have to do personal training now, you know, just, just bits and bobs. Um, but I feel like you have to have your full focus on uh, on fighting to be able to achieve the highest levels. A lot of athletes that do, you know, focus specifically on that tend to end up doing the best. Like, you know, Conor McGregor, for example, literally just put everything into one basket and, you know, it, it played out for him because he, he just did everything towards his career. But again, uh, if you need, if you, you know, you know uh, fighters do need help uh, to cover all, all the different costs and everything like that. If you are going a long time without fighting, of course, it's... Uh, it is it is it is a struggle, but in those cases, I mean, listen, I've worked, uh, I've I've had to do that thing before, so um, that 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 that's the only that's the only side where I'm like, you know, if you if you need to go and do do, do you know if you need to go and make a bit of extra money, you just you know you you gotta go and do it. If it only means you can train once a day, but just make the most of it. Just make the most of it. Obviously, competing at the highest level, you want to have the best chances of winning, so you can then you know. I guess you could take so many different uh, different sides to, to to the story, really. But um, all you got to do is just win. You you win, you'll get your money. So just be confident that you can do so. Confident in your skill set, and then uh, things will start opening up. Yeah, and you were on the kind of the wrong side of that recently, where you you did win or thought you won, and and you, and you you lose half your money. So. It, it that's got a sting, hasn't it? Like it, that's double, that's the, a double um, hit, really, isn't it? When you lose the decision, there's an L on your record, and you lose, you know, half your pace. What, what was that like? Yeah, it was more the tax that 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 was the worst because, and then obviously medical payments, like the medicals, it's you know, it came up to quite a large sum, um, and then obviously the dollars exchange rate and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I ended up not getting a great deal of uh, of money. So it was quite a uh, quite a sting. But you know, I've, as I said, I still do a bit of personal training on the side and, and stuff. And I do have people that are very supportive and helpful, and I'm very grateful for. Uh, you know, Fred from Mauler MMA. He's been a, a you know pretty much one of one of the main sponsors of mine for like the last couple of years, uh, especially when even when things were tough for him, he still helped me out. So, you know, he, he, he's a, he's a, he's a really good guy. And the, the PT and has, has, has helped me quite a lot. And my, my managers, they, they always help me a lot and trying to get me money where I hear and where I can. So, you know, I've, I have been focusing full on just with the training to make sure that I can go out there and win my next fight and then get the, uh, the massive payday that I've been, that I've been looking for. Um, cause yeah, that's one thing that people don't take into account. Yeah. It looks all good when you win all your fights, you know, you get the full pay, but what about when you lose? So, um, it was very, it stung a bit more because, you know, obviously I f you feel like the judges are taking away your, your livelihood almost like it taking away the money that you feel like you should have earned. But, um, I'm not bitter towards that. Um, I, I understand that, you know, it's, it's part of the game. Well, well, one thing it also teaches me is don't leave it into the hands of the judges. It may look like you're winning, but you don't know what's on their heads. I mean, they've made some very questionable decisions. Like, I'll give another example. Jack Shaw, I don't know about you, but that was a clear unanimous decision. Mm -hmm. Clear unanimous decision. And he won by split decision. I mean, what judge would have gave it to the other guy? <laughs> Makes no sense to me. So they do make some questionable decisions, but you just got to accept it, move on from it, learn from it. And that's it. We, we keep moving forward. We never look back. We keep moving forward. Yeah, and the thing is, the the one judge who might have gave that decision wrong, there's no um, there's no repercussions. He's back in the chair next week. He's getting his money, and he's probably making another error. But I'm sure we can speak about that all day, and we'll get onto some more fun stuff rather than the negative stuff. Um, we've got a few good fights coming up, and I'm just interested to get your predictions. So, first off, uh, Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, three. What do you make of that one? I knew that one was coming up. <laughs> um, the uh, the 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 big fight. Um. In my personal opinion, I believe McGregor uh, will, will win that fight. I, I feel like, you know, obviously people are, a lot, are, are you know, not showing a lot of belief in Poirier, but I feel like McGregor does a very good job of adjusting. 
um, adjusting again from his mistakes and learning from it, like from Diaz one to Diaz two, is completely different fighter in terms of how he how he approached it. And you know, he takes losses very seriously, and then he 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 tries to do everything he can to um, to correct those errors and 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 move forward. And you know, as probably judging by the way I'm speaking, you know, I'm, I'm trying to take a page out of his books. You know what I mean, like. Uh, take what you can from the losses and 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 really build from it so and you know obviously on social media it, he shows that he's working hard he's obviously promoting his uh his condition program stuff like that but i feel like you know behind the scenes he is working hard so i know that uh he'll definitely be bringing something different i feel if he brings back his karate style uh you know bringing more kicks and stuff like that um, I, I reckon he'll probably finish Poirier because uh, although Poirier is insanely talented and skillful, uh, I do think the striking advantage goes to uh, McGregor and he'll definitely be more wary of the takedown because he wasn't even worried about the takedown and that's why he got surprised with it. So, uh, uh, you know, and th- it was the boxing heavy approach that got McGregor caught in those instances. So, uh, I reckon he'll make the the appropriate adjustments, and uh, yeah, I reckon I reckon he'll win within the five rounds. Interesting. It's a, it's going to be a great fight, and it's only what's it nine days away now. So, uh, yep. moving on from that one, on to the next one in your division, we've got Jan Blachowicz against Glover Teixeira. I'm sure that's a fight you've got your eye on. What do you make of it? Uh, I think Blachowicz. Um, I know teixeira has got an extremely good grappling game. Uh, He's very dangerous on the ground and very durable. He gets hit by some shots and he just keeps coming. He's like a zombie. But um, Blahovic, I think he does have a bit of a striking advantage. He's a bit faster. Um, he's a bit more crisp with with, with, with his striking as well, even though Tessera does have good boxing. Um, both of them, you know, will, will go for a takedown. Um, but I think Blahovic, if he lands a shot, that's where it's going to be the 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 difference maker in the fight. So I believe Blahovic will probably take that one. And in terms of, you know, who will hold that belt over the next year or two or, or maybe three, do you think Blahovic can make that title his own or do you think someone's there at the top of the division ready to take him out? I mean, we can't deny Prohaska is a uh, dangerous man, uh, especially the, uh, the fight with Ray. I mean, it's funny because he fights so wild, but then all his risks end up paying off for him because although he gets caught, you see him get rocked. He's always there. He comes back and then he, he, he sort of, it's almost like he switches on, like he turns up another level. He does something completely different. I mean, the only thing that hasn't really been tested so much as of yet in the UFC is just the grappling. What if someone does take him, like, you know, Reyes took him down and controlled him quite a fair bit. And then, Prohaska did manage to get out, but what if a guy is even more proficient on the ground mm-hmm. and is able to do stuff like that? So it's interesting, but I think that's probably going to be the biggest threat so far in the light heavyweight division. Obviously, there's Rakic as well, but I believe Rakic and uh, and um, Prohaska should fight each other to, to you know to to see who the number one contender is for the belt. But then again, I guess it cancels out one of those fighting for the belt. So. At the end of the day, either Rakic or Prohaska are going to be the ones, obviously, at the top of the table. Great, and that, that would be a great fight, and hopefully we'll see it soon. And, and just finally, we've got Jake Paul, and he's finally going in with you know someone who can actually bang a bit, and Tyro Woodley. He's, he's out of form lately, but he, he's got he's got the punch in him. Do you think he can pull it off? I mean, I really hope he does. <laughs> I mean, do you know what's mad? Yeah, when I when I when when. Uh, everyone saw Jake Paul basically just take out Ben Askren. For the MMA community, it looked very horrible because, oh, he's a supposed world champion and two or three different organizations. And the next thing you know, he goes against a YouTuber and he gets sparked out. Now, it's no surprise that Ben Askren's striking is not his strong suit. He's a definite grappler. It's funny because a lot of the, you know, a lot, a lot of the boxing community would then, when then think, oh, well, these MMA fighters aren't so tough. I'm like, okay, well, why don't none of these YouTubers fight in MMA? And uh, also, put grappling in the mix. Ben Askren would have eaten him alive. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, in terms of you're talking pure boxing, Tyron Willie's got much heavier hands. Um, Jay Paul's been training in specifically in boxing for a longer time than Woodley has. So it's just a case of Woodley needs to go in there, concert, like, you know, 
it is a different bit of an energy game in, in boxing than it is to MMA. Like when you spar boxing rounds, you find it's like using completely different energy systems than you are when you're doing MMA. So I think that will also sort of play a factor. But I do see Woodley winning, man. Like, come on now. A guy who's been a world champion for such a long time and and uh, a, a guy... you got you got to admit that Jake Paul's talented. you got to admit that, you know, he, he can definitely bang. Uh, but... Um, I do think there's going to be a bit more of experience and ring craft from uh, Woodley because he's actually a much better striker than Askren. So uh, I'll be interested to see how one plays out, but I really hope Woodley brings it home for us. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the perfect step. It, it, it's definitely the picking the right opponents at the right time, and it's a, it's a tough one. So I'm actually quite looking forward to it. Last time I actually put 80 quid on Ben Ashkin and I felt like an absolute idiot afterwards. So I think I'll stay away from the better this time. I don't I don't yeah. know too much. Um yeah so that that's pretty much it from me unless you want to add anything. Uh nah mate uh, I just want to say obviously thank you so much for 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 having a chat again. It's all it's always a pleasure uh talking to you. Thank you for obviously giving me exposure and uh, having a platform to to have my say. So uh thank you so much for that mate and uh yeah, obviously, I just got to thank uh, thank everyone who's been involved with me, um, all my support, all my family, all my friends. Uh, we're going to go out and put on the best performance uh, that I've ever had. <laughs> it's a cliche MMA thing to say, isn't it? But, uh, you know, oh, this is going to be my best performance. But really, the strides that I've made, um, I mean, I've even talked to a couple of my, uh, couple of my friends, like MMA friends, um, and uh, it's, it, you know, we we're all going through this journey together and we're, we we all realize we're going through very similar things. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see what lessons they're having. And then, you know, uh, sometimes they might, they might not think that there's a lesson and there is and stuff like that. So it's just a great journey. This, this whole MMA thing, but I'm looking to go and put Khalil Roundtree away and go get me another contract and then go on my way to the, go on my way to the gold. So uh, I'm confident. Um, I'm training very hard. And uh, I'm ready to to put on a show, especially if it's going to be in front of my hometown. So, uh, London, watch out. Yeah, well, hopefully I'll see you there if it's in London. If not, I'll speak to you after. Hopefully it's a big win as well. So, yeah, uh, good luck with the rest of the fight camp and, and can't wait to watch, mate. All right, thank you so much, my brother. You have a lovely day, yeah? You too, bye now. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.